and was always being killed easily, and he had the gift of gab, as you all know, if you knew him. In Tampa, Ron finished his senior year of high school in 1964, and we met at the senior picnic. Ron started junior college, but had to stop when his family left for Germany. He was drafted while in Germany, and I'm saying Uncle Sam had a very long reach back then. Ron went to Army Basic Training and OCS, which is Officers Candidate School, and Jungle School in Panama, Central America, that is. He started in communication school, but before he could finish, he was reassigned to the dreaded infantry. And I say dreaded because an infantry lieutenant had a very low survival chance in Vietnam. Uh, the big blow happened for him in 1967 when his father passed just before retirement at the age of 45. He never got to see Ron graduate from OCS, Officers Candidate School. Another life-changing obstacle for Ron was when he stepped on an old rusty vehicular landmine in Vietnam, April 23rd, 1969. It went off with his weight and threw him up in the air. And when he landed, he knew he'd lost his leg, he, but he was more concerned about the men he felt responsible for. That's the way he was. He was determined to move on with life. He came home to Tampa and we were married Christmas of 1969, 52 years now. He had several more surgeries before he could finish college, but he persisted and graduated with a degree in business administration. While he was in school, we had our daughter, and he always worried about being able to support the three of us. One thing that really hurt his feelings was when he went for job interviews, an interviewer actually asked him to roll up his sleeve to see if he had been shooting up drugs. They really didn't know what a straight arrow he was. But he soon found the job I truly believe he was meant to do as a veterans benefits counselor at the Veterans Administration in downtown St. Petersburg. Losing his leg, Ron could no longer go for long hikes in the woods, so he turned to boating and cars, of course. <laughs> Our first boat was a small John boat, which we ran up and down the hills through a river. Our last boat was a 21-foot well craft, and we took it out a lot, even trailering it to the Keys. And of course, Ron took the Coast Guard safety course, that was Ron. I was prepared or over prepared for everything. We had to have backups to the backups, <laughs> two extra gas tanks, two extra anchors, and a backup motor, just and so on, just to name a few things. He was always about keeping us safe. As to cars, when I complained to one of my fellow employees about Ron always trading cars, well, he kept me in line. He, made me, he set me straight and he said, well, at least he's trading cars and not lives. <laughs> so, in 1976, we moved, moved to St. Pete to the house we live in now. At that time, Ron persuaded his mom to move in with us, again, taking care of family. Ron had a sense of humor, too. Once when he was on crutches in the grocery store, a little boy came up to, me, to him and said, Mister, Mister, what happened to your leg? And Ron looked down and said, I was walking through the woods when a big bear came up and <laughs> I'm sure that's not politically correct. <laughs> we had a good laugh. Ron did not mind about talking about his injuries. In fact, as you know, he did not mind about talking at all. <laughs> he always said, put in a dime and you get back a quarter's worth. <laughs> Referring to how he did like to talk. We had many good times with his fellow veterans, annual trips from Melbourne, for the reunions and parties at the guys' houses. Ron worked for the VA, but he was not the enemy, as some veterans thought the VA employees were. He worked tirelessly and became known as Fight. Oh, let me get my book. <laughs> I forgot. He was known as Fight Brook Brown. <laughs> That's actually what they, they thought of him at work. He had many parts of this code of federal, federal regulations memorized <laughs> at work because he would read every new regulation that came along. But this was in order to help his fellow veterans. 
You might say that he was the mole in the enemy camp, ferreting out information for the veterans. He had many parts, okay, I already said he had no parts. This was his mission to help as many veterans as he could get the benefits they needed and deserved. Ron lost a leg, and to him that was a static condition. You know, he dealt with it. But when his other injuries and contamination from Agent Orange started on the end on his body, that was very hard. In 1993, after 20 years working at the VA, his doctor told him he had to retire to survive. He didn't want to quit. Even in retirement, he would help anyone who needed help with a claim. He even he helped guys at the vet center and when he could, and he would give them the tools they needed to deal with the VA. In the last few years, his only trips out of the house were for the medical appointments at Bay Pines. He would always wear his pen and he would point to this and he'd probably say, see this? This means I worked 20 years at, at, the veter at the regional office. I know about veterans. And then he would always wear his hat. And he would, and the people there at uh, Big Pines would come to know him. They'd see this hat come down the hall, they knew him. Of course, you know, he's very memorable. <laughs> <laughs> I had to retire in 2001 to take care of both Ron and his mom, Louise and she passed away in 2010. We were and are a total military family. Both of our fathers were in World War II. Our daughter, Martine, was in the Marine Corps and the Army and served in Iraq as an Army nurse. And our, both, both of our grandsons, Thomas Ashworth and Frank Ashworth, currently serve our country in the Army. Juan was very proud.